In this video we give an introduction to arch model. We will consider an arch 1 model, write up the model, look at the interpretation. So we consider an arch 1 model which is given by the following. First we have an equation yt equals t prime theta plus epsilon t. So this is an equation for the conditional mean of yt given xt. And here xt is a set of regressors and epsilon t is just a shock or an innovation. Next we specify epsilon t as sigma t set t. Set t we assume is a IID normally distributed innovation with a mean of zero and a variance of one. So this is a standard normal shock. But in every period the shock set t enters and then it's scaled by a coefficient sigma t which is a stochastic process. And now we define sigma t squared as a constant plus alpha epsilon t minus 1 squared. So this is the new part of the model here. This is an equation for the conditional variance of epsilon t. The final thing we need here, because this is our conditional variance, we need to impose restrictions to ensure that that's positive. So we impose the restriction that the constant term is strictly positive and that alpha is positive or zero. Note that if alpha is zero we have a constant conditional variance and we're back to the model we have considered previously in the course. We could extend the arch1 model to an arch p model and that would just imply that we include instead of just one lag of epsilon t squared here, we include p of those lags. So we have epsilon squared t minus 1, t minus 2, all the way to t minus p. Let's look at how to interpret the model. We do that in three steps. So first, note that set t here is normally distributed and independent over time, and it's a standard normal distribution. So these are our standard normal shocks. Then we define epsilon t as sigma t set t. So that means that we have a scaling of the shocks by sigma t. Now look at the expected value of epsilon t squared given the information set at t minus 1. So this is the conditional variance of the shock. And note first that the information set at t minus 1 that includes y1, x1, all the way up to yt minus 1, xt minus 1. And based on the data here, we can compute epsilon 1 all the way up to epsilon t minus 1. So note that epsilon t minus 1 is in the information set it minus 1. So that's part of what we condition on here. Now we can use the expression for epsilon t, simply plug in, and we get the expected value of sigma t squared set t squared conditional on the information set t minus 1. And note that because epsilon t minus 1 is in the information set and sigma t squared is given by omega alpha epsilon t minus 1 squared, then conditioning on this we can simply put it outside the expectation because it's included in the information set. Next we have the expected value of set t squared given the information set t minus 1. Note that the expression here is equal to the unconditional expectation of set t squared. There's no information in the information set about set t squared. And finally this is equal to 1 because we have assumed set t to be standard normally distributed. So the variance is 1. That implies that we can simply write the conditional expectation of epsilon t squared as sigma t squared. So that's exactly how we define sigma t squared. That's the conditional variance conditional on the information set from the past. This implies that we can write epsilon t given the information set t minus 1. This is normally distributed with mean 0 and a variance of sigma t squared. So note that this formulation is pretty often used. Instead of having this line here, epsilon t equal to sigma t set t, but that's exactly the same. This is more precise, so that's why we use it. So what we have here is just the conditional distribution of epsilon t given the information set it minus 1. Next, define or decompose epsilon t squared into a conditional expectation given the information set t minus 1 and then a surprise term vt. 
The first part here, conditional expectation, is exactly the definition of sigma t squared. The second part here is a surprise term where the expected value of vt given the information set t minus 1 is equal to 0. So this is just decomposing the actual squared chunk into a conditional expectation and the surprise term. We can use this to rewrite the expression we have for sigma t squared. Note that what we have here implies that we can write epsilon t squared as sigma t squared plus vt. So we can use this to plug in down here and we get epsilon t squared minus vt is equal to the constant term plus alpha epsilon t minus 1 squared. Now take vt to the other side and we have an expression for epsilon t squared given its own past and the surprise term. So this shows that we have an AR1 process for this squared innovation. If we had an RHP model, we would do exactly the same, and we could show that we got an ARP process for the squared innovation. Now we know that this AR1 process is stationary if alpha is abs in absolute terms is less than 1, but note that we already have a restriction here that it has to be positive. So if alpha falls between 0 and below 1, then there exists a stationary solution. We can define sigma square as the unconditional expectation of epsilon t squared, so that's the unconditional variance, and we know that that simply is the solution, the stationary solution to the AR1 process given by the constant term divided by 1 minus alpha. So this shows that we have a constant unconditional variance of epsilon t if the parameter alpha here falls between 0 and below 1. This is just an illustration. I think you get the idea. The illustration of epsilon t, or it could be yt if the parameters theta were equal to 0. Now we could make a confidence bound for epsilon t based either on the conditional variance or the unconditional variance. So first we do it based on the conditional variance. We note that it fluctuates. It goes something like this converges back towards the unconditional mean and it's symmetric so it should look something like this. So this is supposed to be symmetric. So this is the confidence bands or an illustration of the confidence bands based on the conditional variance. So this allows for volatility clustering. There are periods where the conditional variance is high. There are periods where the conditional variance is low. We could also plot the confidence bands based on the unconditional variance. So this is what we have here. This is the confidence bands based on the unconditional variance. And this is given that the stationarity solution is fulfilled. So note that the ARCH model is conditionally heteroscedastic, but unconditionally homoscedastic. The interpretation of the ARCH model is that if we have a large innovation in last period, say t minus 1, then the conditional variance of the innovation in period t will be high. If the shock last period was small, then the conditional variance of the shock next period will be small. So this is exactly the concept of volatility clustering. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.